Good morning, everyone, to Marketing Matters. I'm Sarah Touchstone with Landmark Title, bringing you the best in the real estate industry every week, Wednesday at 10 a.m. here on Marketing Matters. And speaking of the best, who is better to have on a real estate webinar than our new commissioner? Lewis, we're so excited to have you here today. We've got some really interesting questions. And I mean, obviously, we have a really interesting real estate market to deal with here. Arizona is one of the real estate markets out there that I do feel like the rest of the country really looks to, to see what's going on, what's changing, and what they can expect in the future. So instead of showing a slide that just has questions on it, I'm going to go ahead and pop our faces up on here so that everybody can see us in live and large form. But like I said, if y'all have any questions, please, this is a wonderful opportunity to hop on live and ask the commissioner things that you see going on, things that you have interest with our real estate market. So please participate. And with that, Lewis, are you ready for question number one? <laughs> For it, Sarah. And first and, and foremost, I want to say thank you so much for, uh, for the invitation. This really is uh, one of the best parts of, of this job as, is talking about what the Department of Real Estate is doing, uh, what we're doing well, and also to hear from the real estate profession, what are some of the opportunities and what does the market look like from your standpoint? So we all are partners, I believe, in um, the protection of the public through their real estate transaction. You know, the department's mission is to protect the public through licensing and, and regulation by statute, but we really can't, um, can't be the most efficient at, at serving that mission if we don't have a really good partnership with the profession and seeing that as the most important thing that, that we do. So thank you for having me, Sarah. It's wonderful to have you on here. And you, you've been very busy since you took over the commissionership. Um, with a lot of these type of interviews because people are really excited to have you in this role. In fact, I saw that you were on my, uh, my good friend, Mike Weinstein's radio broadcast just yesterday, right? I was, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. No, and it has, I have been, I have been busy and it's, it's um, in an effort to talk about what we're doing and what we're seeing. Arizona's real estate market, as you said, is so busy and we've seen so much so much growth over the last several years. These are, I imagine some of the challenges or the conversation, the questions that you'll be asking are just really um, from that, from what we're seeing. And um, um, Arizona is unique uh, to other countries in that we, we are seen as a, as a test lab, um, oftentimes for innovation and, and new things. And real estate is no exception to those, those changing models. So excited to get into it, into it with you. Exactly. Yes, we are kind of the model for a lot of the country when it comes to real estate. So right off the bat, interest rates, you know, interest rates. Um, I heard that um, the federal government's going to be meeting soon regarding these. And we know we know that we've had it really good for a really long time. So we know that there is going to be a rise in interest rates coming right around the corner. Um, what is this gonna do to the real estate market here? Because we are, like we said, we're kind of the testing field for a lot of this. Well, Sarah, I'll start by saying, I wish that I had a crystal ball, like we all wish that we had to really uh, see and project we're going to, going to be. There's so many different uh, perspectives of, on that and uh, sort of a wait and see uh, as far as that goes. Certainly listen to and hear the discussion around the, uh, the interest rate uh, changes and what could be anticipated for this year. But it's just important to note, again, that Arizona's real estate market has been incredibly busy. And in 2022, from what I've heard, and actually had this discussion with, uh, with Mike yesterday as well, that 2022 is probably going to be another, another busy year, at least in Arizona. We've seen tremendous growth in Arizona's market. Uh, we see migration to Arizona from uh, individuals uh, that are moving to, to the state from other, from other states for various reasons. Some of that is that you know, companies are expanding in Arizona, and with that comes uh, the need for, 
for employment uh, for those companies to, uh, to fill, fill positions, which is really positive for, for Arizona and Arizona's economy. But the availability of housing is, is critical you know, for, for those reasons, but also to be available for, for Arizonans. You know, I've been in Arizona now for about 13 years. Um, I'm like many others that came to, to our great state from somewhere else, but Arizona is home. And we have, you know, we, we do things here the Arizona way and we are, uh, we need to pr preserve that as well. So we're in for another busy 2022. Wish I had a crystal ball as far as how that, the, those interest rate changes or other things are going to affect us. But Arizona's economy is strong and healthy. Our real estate market is, is busy and it'll probably be, and we'll look forward to it being that way in 22. I think we can expect a really great 2022 here in Arizona. And it is such a business friendly area that I think we will. I think we'll continue to see just really positive, positive growth. Um, interest rates, they're gonna do what they're gonna do, but you know, as hardworking real estate agents, hopefully there will be plenty to go around. So Luz, we actually have some questions coming in. So I'm gonna work one of those in. Um, we have one from the Q and A section. Is there a department in which I can submit our advertising? Um, they've tried to read and apply all the rules, but you know it's always really great when you know that you've got a solid advertising and approved piece to go out. What is your advice on that? Great question, and uh, something that I've heard a lot about um, since since I um, took over as as commissioner in October is around you know. A real estate brokerage, and I would say that most, if not all, they want to do it right. We want to have our advertising right, and same if we're a, li a licensee. We want to do things the right way, the Arizona way. We have resources on our website around what are the guidelines for advertising. I would encourage uh, that the, the, the individual has submitted the question to refer to those resources. We also have a, uh, an article that former Commissioner Lowe wrote with the Arizona Association of Realtors CEO Michelle Lind, which is really comprehensive as far as what those requirements are. I will say that we're um, starting to undertake an update to that advertising brochure to um, uh, bring it. Um, so that was written six years ago, seven years ago, and lots changes over a period of time. So looking at providing more guidance, more clarity in distributing that information. Um, but I will say, Sarah, if I could add, the most common issue that we receive um, actually from other licensees that may observe things out there in the, in the community related to advertising is clear and prominent as far as the employing broker, the employing brokerage. So that's something common that we hear about um, and encouraged to take a look at that, the individual take a look at that. As they, as they do, but you can always send a question into us and we can answer to the extent that we can, can't provide legal advice, but we will be the most helpful that we can. Yeah, I love that you brought up the brokerage too, because the brokerage is a great resource um, for real estate agents and their advertising, correct? Correct, absolutely. Have a conversation with your, with your broker and, and you know, your broker is ultimately responsible for approving that advertising for that advertisements and that marketing. So have a conversation with them if you have any questions first. Excellent, really good question. Okay, my next question or set of questions kind of has to deal with the eye buyers. So this is one of those things that is unique to Arizona, you know, we've seen over the years, we've seen a lot of the different iBuyers kind of come and go. And even during the pandemic, we saw kind of a drop in the amount of iBuyers here, but now we're kind of getting through it a little bit more. So this does make the Arizona real estate market, um, you know, unique in a lot of ways. Uh, so the question is, um, how can the iBuyer companies affect the rules and the regulations here in the real estate market? Like do the excess of iBuyers have, a, you know, kind of come into play with the rules and regulations and, you know, being held to some of the same standards as individual brokerages? It's a, it's a great question, uh, Sarah. And again, um, when I so I've been at the Department of Real Estate for um, almost ten years, and during that time, of course, working with with Commissioner Judy Lowe, she was at the department for about thirteen years 
uh, one of the longest serving uh, directors in, in state history. It's really uh, uh, impressive and, and phenomenal. So why I bring that up is because when asked this question, uh, often it likened to one of the first comments or the things that she talked about when she came to the department is that a challenge in the real estate industry, especially in Arizona, are changing business models. Right, changing changes in the industry, and we're seeing those now play out in a really uh, busy market uh, as well. And that same challenge, I would say, is now um, as far as before, as it relates to uh, regulation, rules, and statutes. So in Arizona, we talk about I buyers and the rules uh, uh, being assumed that they're different for them. They're not. the The I buyer companies that we uh, think of, and I'll let you say the names, I, I won't, but those uh, companies, they are required to have an Arizona real estate license, just like, you know, you could say traditional real estate or the other models that are out there. So if you go to our website and you type in the name of that company, they will have, should have a real estate license if they're conducting real estate in Arizona, if that license is required. So uh, we have, uh, um, fortunately or unfortunately, we have a set of statutes and rules and I pull out my, my law book and say, this is our instruction book at the department for what we can do, but also it's the instruction book for the real estate profession as far as what you can do. So uh, we adhere to that and follow it. And as things continue to change, it will be that conversation and that marrying of what is the activity and what should the policy be? And those are passed at our state legislature and, and are in fact are convening uh, now and they convene in, in starting in January and they have those type of conversations related to what those statutes should be. Excellent. Well, we have another question from the gallery. So I'm gonna go ahead and work that in as well. Um, question is, how are we dealing with hedge funds coming in and taking away from home ownership. So I'm thinking this is like investors, um, you know, we've, we've got a lot of them coming in from out of state and it is affecting individual, you know, abilities to buy. Um, you know, is there anything that on the department side that they have seen? Sure. No, it's another another fantastic question. There, everyone that's uh, that's on here today is 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 thinking about some good questions, and they're 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 hot topics. So again, I'll say that that is not a brand new uh, brand new issue. And seeing Arizona, these in, these companies, these investors, seeing that as an opportunity uh, for this state to to purchase, we have we've had such an inventory uh, issue in Arizona, like like other states as well that when investment companies come in and they purchase up the available inventory, that definitely adds, adds uh, stress to first time home buyers, um, others that, that are looking for an opportunity for, for housing. So no, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, investment in the state is, is not necessarily a bad thing. It's really affecting though the availability of, of inventory. Know that your question is specific to what can the department do about that? We can just talk about the, uh, the regulation and the requirements of when a license is required um, and the market is dictating a lot of, of the availability and affordable housing and that conversation is something that is, is widespread right now and a lot of focus on affordable housing at the legislature and the governor's office and the, uh, the Arizona Department of Housing is really leading a lot of those efforts. And, uh, and that's throughout the state. That's not just the great state of Maricopa County, that's, that's through the, the, the entire state. So recognize it as a challenge. Certainly uh, Arizona is unique in that we have a lot of this activity that's happening, uh, but um, we'll see what the market holds for 22. And, and I can just say, recognize that that certainly has been a challenge. It really is. And there are some new changes to like the Homestead Act that were enacted um, in January 1st, we're actually going to have a class on that on um, February 8th. So staying, I think, up to date on the 1031 exchange policies, the Homestead Acts, a lot of these things, that's probably some of the best things you can equip yourself with is when we have investors coming in and, you know, they're, they're investing in Arizona um, not only, you know, how can you best serve your clients, but how can you best maybe attract these type of investors too? Because a lot of times they're using individual real estate agents 
So I think those are really important to stay up to date on, you know, policies as they change and how you can best serve your, you know, your clients or potential and future clients. Um, and then I'm going to go back to one of our other questions that has to do with the auction brokerages. So this seems to be a this seems to be a fairly newer trend. Obviously, we've had auctions, you know, that's nothing new. But brokerages that you know only show houses at a certain point in time, kind of creating the frenzy uh, to get people in at that certain time, so that everybody, you know, they're not doing house showings uh, throughout uh, a large schedule time, a very short schedule time. How is this, and this is, seems to be like, you know, a new emerging Arizona thing. How does this affect um, the individual agents when they're trying to go out and they're trying to show and they're trying to compete for these auction brokerages houses? Sure. No, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. And uh, certainly, as you as you said, it is a changing business model. It is something that's new, and and the uh, the brokerages or the the entities, the licensed entities, as we said, are required to be licensed and are required to follow the same statutes and regulations as as all real estate brokerages are. So let's follow along and see that the, the market is uh, the competitive market in Arizona is really. Um, uh, dictating a lot of the challenges that we see, and it's, it's very, it's very competitive, um, uh, very competitive out there. But it just should be taken away that the requirements that are on one brokerage in in Arizona are on another brokerage as well. Nice, nice. Well, this kind of goes into the next question from the gallery. Speaking of, you know, those types of brokerages, let's talk a little bit about new bills. Because new builds are a little bit different. So we've got a, kind of a series of questions about new builds. So I'm just going to kind of go through it. And there might be multiple answers, but I'll go ahead and just pose all of the questions. Sure. Um, why are new home builders allowed to use real estate agents and realtors, but not abide by the professionalism that is required by individual agents? Uh, why can they create their own contracts? Why can their agents go around the other real estate agents and talk with the clients about that transaction? Sure. No, Sarah, that another another great question. Um, I want to start with that by just talking a little bit about what we're seeing related to uh, new home building and um, uh, development from um, from subdividers. So as our, in our statute, our statute defines a subdivider as anyone uh, that has six or more lots or parcels in um, in a community. And that sub that subdivider is required to obtain a subdivision public report that is required to be provided to a prospective uh, or actual purchaser. Uh, and that public report has about 25 different points of statute of things that are required information that's required to be provided including you know where's the water uh where's the 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 the, the sewage uh where the schools are the uh, the lights and streets and roads are they placed in there so that that prospective purchaser knows exactly what they're getting and when they should when they should get it so uh, the department has seen a historic number of applications to our development services uh, division for that, those um, from those subdividers, and it's not just new home build. I want to make sure that I say it's from that investor as well that has six or more. It could be in Arizona, it could be whoever owns that that property, and they're required to get a public report as well. So oftentimes, and I just want to make a plug for it too. Oftentimes, that that individual doesn't realize that in Arizona statute, you're considered a subdivider. And you need to get that public report and interact with our office to do that. We've seen a 10 year high in applications over the last actually two years that just um, escalated from that um, in those applications. So a little bit of background on, on home building. I will say also that in Arizona, as we know, Arizona does not require that a specific contract uh, be used. A contract by Arizona's constitution can be written on a napkin. That's the example that I've always heard uh, over time. Now, I don't know if that's advisable to do it on a napkin, but it's certainly a specific contract isn't, isn't um, re required. So as we, as many of us know, the Association of Realtors has standard forms that are not prescribed by the department. 
And often, you know, there are other entities or a new home builder that prescribes their own forms as well. I would encourage just through the interaction between a licensee or a brokerage and a new a home builder to have that conversation and work out the details. The department does not dictate um, that one is used over the other, but certainly as I've traveled around the state over the last 90 days, this is a question that I've received often. And uh, it seems to be a point of consternation as far as which, um, you know, there's a, there's a different pathway for each. So recognize it's a challenge. Um, would encourage also a conversation if anybody is a member of the Association of Realtors to talk about that, but also to talk about that with the, uh, with the new home build folks as well. Really, uh, that was a great question. Uh, we've got another great question about fractional ownership listings in the MLS. Um, is fractional ownership listing something that is okay in Arizona? And is it something that's here to stay? Um, this is not, a, is, is this not another way to say timeshare? Well, I, I was going to, uh, going to uh, begin my response, Sarah, by saying that typically we understand fractional ownership as timeshare, you know, and a timeshare, um, uh, a timeshare is required to actually um, obtain that same public report that a subdivider is required to have to provide that to a prospective purchaser of a timeshare interest as well. Certainly, changing changing models of ownership. We've had the conversation around uh, the uh, the oh, how do you, how do we say this right? VRBO, the uh, those type of of models. Um, it's an expansive, expansive conversation, um, and I don't know other than the specifics of, of that um, situation that's been presented to you, whether that's a, a, a co-op, um, that's another version of fractional ownership we've heard of, as well as timeshares or the, the uh, other vacation rental type thing. And I should clarify as well, vacation rentals, if it's 30 days or less, does not require a real estate license um, by Arizona statute. However, um, if it's more than that 30 days, it, it does. Wow, okay. So most likely, yeah, here to stay, maybe grow upon, especially as our Arizona real estate market continues to heat up and prices continue to increase. I could say that we will see that type of trend continue. All right, here's a really fun question. What is the most common violation that you see committed by real estate agents? Sure. So excited to answer that because I get that all, all the time. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I respond from the perspective of within our presentations to talk about it from an informational uh, uh, point of view. So anyone that hears the discussion of this, hopefully it triggers something in their mind to say, these are things that I need to look out for, be aware of. So the number one that we receive or have received lately are failure to disclose material um, material facts. So think about, you know, um, the, the property had mold and wasn't disclosed. Uh, there was a roof leak um, and there's water damage that wasn't disclosed. There's, um, you know, wood inf infestation, those things. And um, those complaints that we that come in are always, you know, the allegation maybe from a from a buyer that says, but the licensee, the the the, the agent knew about this. And then it becomes a, a discussion and, and certainly there's a, you know, there's the licensing point of view from the department, but then also what is, how does that relate to any possible civil litigation or arbitration? So keeping that in mind about disclosure is just so important. Um, disclosure that you have a real estate license. We talked about investors and we talked about, you know, that part, you know, wholesaling and uh, warehousing, as it's called, is a conversation. Uh, Arizona law, I believe, uh, allows for that contract uh, for a property to be purchased. But oftentimes that uh, that seller, maybe a distressed seller, doesn't realize that, you um, uh, you know, you had a license or you didn't have a license and I didn't get as much for my property as I thought that I should have have received and they file a complaint and, and then we, we go through there. And again, that wholesaling, that purchase of the contract is not necessarily unlawful, but it certainly can be something that we that we hear about in this busy, busy market. The other important one that I want to note, too, is in this busy market are rejected offers and presenting all offers uh, to the seller uh, and for your buyer. You are required in, in, uh, in Arizona, you're required to maintain a rejected offer for at least one year. 
And if you have that documentation and a, or your broker has that documentation as well, and uh, the department receives a complaint that you didn't, you didn't present that, that mm -hmm. offer and it was rejected. If you have that, it certainly can clarify any question. So, so hold on to that and your broker is required to maintain any other uh, offer that moves forward to an escrow uh, process for five years. So those are, those are probably the three that I'll, that I'll stick to uh, for now, but we certainly receive um, lots of other things. And some are just around the other agent now on the other end of the transaction wasn't nice to me. Yeah, wasn't, yeah, wasn't kind and wasn't timely and wasn't all of those things. So I would just encourage everyone to be, be kind to each other. Especially, we all need that. Yes, especially in this industry. I mean, it, it can get really cutthroat out there and you can get really frustrated, especially, you know, if, if you're struggling with your buyers or you're struggling with a really difficult property um, and you're struggling with the sellers. Uh, you never know what somebody on the other end of the transaction is really going through. So it is, you, it, it's so nice to see in our real estate community when agents are working together, they're being kind, they're being considerate because we really are, we're, we're the same community. Everybody is, you know, in the real estate community. And although we live in a very large metro, our community is very close and very intimate. So you never know when you are going to have to come across that person again. And you, you know, it's always good. Don't, don't burn bridges in the real estate industry. Be kind. I like that. Um, and then I've got a couple more questions. Uh, are there going to be any major changes coming up in 2022 uh, for ADRE policies or, you know, changes that you and rules and regulations that you as the commissioner would like to see? come about? Sure. No, I, I will first want to just go into just some of the things that we're looking for for 20 for 22. Uh, not always not specific to from regulation, but just from a from a department uh, perspective for for how we can serve our customers best. You know, we in 2015 under this governor, each agency uh, adopted what was called the Arizona Management System, which really is really just think about an intentional um, system that defines how you do your work. And a part of that is uh, talking about who is your customer. You know, our customer is the 91,000 real estate licensees in the state in delivering quality, timely service to our customers. Our mission is to protect the public and we have that enforcement ability, and that's just, just critical to make sure things are done, done the right way in reviewing those complaints that are received from the public. But we certainly have an obligation to be timely in what we do. You know, our statute allows us 60 days to approve an original license. We take an average of one day. Uh, it, it takes, uh, our, our time frames allow us 100 days to approve a subdivision public report. We're averaging under four days to do that. It's really important that we be timely and be streamlined in what we do. So we'll continue to focus on that. But we are seeing that we approve between 400 and 500 new licenses each month. You know, that's, that's, that's a lot that, that come in. Now, granted, there are still some that, that, that drop off um, and decide that their license should be inactive or in their grace period that we don't see. But we just want to be timely to do that. Focus on online services and technology. If anyone's gone to our website and seen our message center, our new website that was launched in, in 2020, uh, we're really focusing on and we'll continue to focus on making sure our services and our platform is running at the same speed and expectations of, of everyone that's busy in, in the real estate profession. Um, we um, will continue to focus on, on customer outreach and, and having these important discussions to both um, share, but also to listen to those great questions that you provided. Um, and we have lots of, of stakeholder meetings and other public meetings at the department that would encourage anyone that's on this call here or just through your networks to, to take a look at our bulletin and, and see those, those meetings and when they're scheduled quarterly and attend and, and be part of the, the discussion. From a, from a regulation standpoint and policy, you know, a, a little nuance of state government, each agency in, in uh, uh, the state is required to go through what's called a continuation process with our state legislature every about 10 years typically. So in 2012, we were continued as an agency for, for 10 years. We're going through that process right now. I testified in front of our House and Senate last week and, and talked about our agency performance. 
and uh, um, we had a recommendation for the Department of Real Estate to continue for eight years. So now that'll move forward as a bill and have to be passed so that we can continue to, uh, to serve, serve the profession. Don't have any concern that it's not going to pass, but it certainly is always an interesting process as bills move through the legislature. I'll add one last point to that. Last session, there were 1,700 pieces of legislation that were introduced. Uh, this year, I think we're over a thousand already as our legislature meets. Each one of those bills has an could have an impact or does have an impact on the state or various areas of the state. We look at those uh, pieces of legislation to understand what the impact is going to be or could be for real estate and also our agency and our service. Uh, but we typically don't take positions on bills other than ones such as, um, you know, we want to continue to be to be be in existence, but we do provide education and background and talk about those those bills throughout the year. Wow. All right. So there could be a lot going on. Love it. We've got a couple more questions from the gallery. One goes back to the rejected offers. Um, so this is a really good one to kind of come back to. It was recently said that it is mandatory to have the seller initial the rejected offer to show that it was presented. Is it sufficient to be able to prove that the offer was presented to the seller as opposed to um, email receipt or signing a spreadsheet? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. I get that, I've received that question a lot. Most recently when I was in Tucson earlier this week and I'll answer, I'll answer the same way. So our statute, our, our regulation says that all offers must be presented. Uh, certainly heard lots of different strategies for how to meet that obligation in this busy environment where there may be 50 offers on a property and you may have a seller that says, I don't want to see them, right? And those questions. So you're dealing with it from, a, from, from both perspectives, but I'll go back to what our statute says is the requirement and as we look at that complaint from that individual, I would just suggest that as a licensee who's dealing with that situation, you have sufficient documentation that's going to prove that it was presented, that you did your due diligence. If you do have a, a, a seller or a party to the transaction that says, I don't want to see those, maybe you have that in writing you have something to think about it from the perspective of sufficient documentation that would assist the department in understanding your efforts to comply with that statute. And, you know, there's, as with a lot of different statutes and regulation, there's sometimes there's ambiguity or there's a question around how, well, well, that's not realistic or how does that happen? But we have to follow what that says and we will, you know, we'll work with you to the extent that, that we're were able. So I think that's the best, the best suggestion that I could give, but it's a great question. That was a really good suggestion. All right. And then we've got one more question and this one's going to get specific. All right. So R42836 says that a licensed person with a brokerage shall not conduct real estate activity for another brokerage. Are you going to continue with the exemption for agents who do open houses for brokerages that are not their own? And then with the three previous three step previously required for that. Yeah, so I, I believe that that is a um, the department's position for that is clarified in a substantive policy statement. Uh, so I would say that um, unless that substantive policy statement were to change, which I, I haven't um, gotten to think about whether it would change or not, I don't believe that it, that it would, then that's, that's the agency's position. Okay, good. Well, that helps when it gets that specific, right? This is the policy. It is in writing, and that is what we are going to do. And so, we, I'll just say quickly, you know, we do, Sarah, we, we, we really do uh, try and we'll continue to um, when these questions come up and, and we need clarification, those substantive policy statements are a way that uh, can, you know, the position, the clarity can be given. So we all are seeing the same thing. We all have the same understanding. And that's, you know, public, you know, both to the public as well as to the profession. Awesome. Good to know. Well, I think that's about all the questions that we had from the gallery. Um, last and final question is, is my favorite, um, and, it's, and you are incredibly knowledgeable, and this has really been a pleasure. 
Um, but I want to kind of go back to a little personal with you being um, on the younger side in the real estate industry. What has public um, impression been? Because I mean, I think I, I'm obviously I'm part of this next generation coming up in the real estate industry. And I think it is so exciting to have someone. Judy was amazing. She was so full of knowledge. And I, but I really do like the fact that you are um, a little bit younger and you, you know, have the ability to bring in fresh ideas. What has public opinion kind of been regarding that? No, thanks, Sarah. No, I am, um, you know, when I first started at the Department of Real Estate, it was about 10 years ago, and I had uh, the opportunity and you know it might have been just a, a a miracle that this that this opportunity happened for me but i was able to work with uh, with commissioner former commissioner judy Lowe, and you know uh, she has tremendous real estate experience and knowledge and i like to think that as i was with her 10 of her about 13 years at the department and one of the first things that she said to me when i first started was uh, as a legislative liaison and i just did our communications and, and that i had come from from uh, from the, the the senate she had said to me she said you know lewis you're going to get bored of just doing that and she just would hand me everything she did that so over over 10 years you know you have a a better you have you know, firm understanding of what our mission is, our industry, how you serve our industry, what are their expectations, and the importance to be timely and to do what you what, what you do through through quality. So I was blessed in that I had a tremendous mentor, friend, and, and, and leader at the department that taught me those things. So, um, you know, over those 10 years, I think I've developed a lot more gray hair. Um, <laughs> Each one of those I'm tremendously proud of because of what what it what it means um, or what we were able to accomplish through that. So, you know, just to answer your question as far as what the reception has been, the industry has been uh, tremendously um, receptive. And through those 10 years, I think you you develop um, a trust level, which is incredibly important that trust is developed as far as the continuity of we're going to continue on the same trajectory to be efficient. Um, do qual give quality services, but also adhere to our mission. And our mission is to protect the public. I talked about partnership when we first started. I really do believe, and that was held before, that it's through a team approach internally that we're successful in what we do. But it's the partnership with the profession that we all want to, we all need to strive to do things the right way uh, and to serve, to serve our client. I like to say, I get asked, I've gotten asked this, Sarah, often, what is the advice that you would give to new agents that are coming into the profession? And I say, you know, I give the same advice to, um, uh, from a, to a new agent and on the flip side to somebody that's been in the industry a long, a long time, is that education is critical. If you are coming in, you look for a mentor, you look for someone to, um, to listen to, somebody to give you advice and to set you on, on the right path. And if you've been in the industry for, for a, a long period of time or for more time, that you look out for and see those opportunities to mentor someone that's coming in. I was fortunate, and like I said, it was a miracle probably uh, that I had that opportunity that put me in the position to, to lead now. Uh, but there's certainly a lot to do. Really excited about it. Huge shoes to fill, but I think we're up to the uh, we're up to the challenge. Well, we are certainly really grateful and excited to have you leading the charge, Lewis. And I love the fact that you brought up mentorship because this is something I say all the time in the real estate industry. The real estate industry is a trade. It's you don't know what you don't know. So having that mentor in our industry. It really is crucial to the success of so many. And I think you hit the nail on the head with having a really great mentor um, in this industry. So we are grateful to have you. Thank you, Sarah. If anybody has any issues or um, like we were talking about earlier with submitting advertisement, what is the best way to get in touch with the department? Great question. Uh, so, you know, our online message center is is the best way to get to a a live person with a specific written question. So, so go online to our website azre.gov 
and look at our message center categories. And should it be a question related to advertising, you can submit that through the, uh, the investigation uh, and, or the general information uh, uh, category, the licensing information. Take a pick for one of those. Our staff is really good about determining when something comes in in one category. No, this needs to go you know, across the hall and it's taken a look at. You can also, everyone, anyone is, is welcome to reach out to me at any time. Uh, my, you can feel free to share my email address, Sarah, if you if you'd like with uh, with participants, and um, you know we're here to uh, to serve. You. And again, related to those advertising questions, we'll answer to the extent the extent that we can, and we'll point you to some good resources. Awesome, awesome! Thank you so much, Lewis. This was great. It's a lot of information, a lot of new things um, that we can expect in the future and the same great quality and service that we have experienced in the past, if not even more rapid. So really looking forward to 2022. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Sarah. This has been, this has been great. Really great. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up our webinar today with a few classes that we have coming up. Obviously we got those questions in. So I did mention about the new Homestead and Judgment um, regulations that were put in on January 1st. So we do have a class coming up. This is going to be a Zoom class because, you know, I love Zoom, obviously. This is what we're on right now. But it does give you the ability to attend anywhere at any time. This one is going to be on Tuesday, February 8th at 9 a.m. So if you would like a copy of the registration and would like to attend, let us know. We'll get that for you. And then we have the continuation in our CE series. We have solar and real estate with Tara. This is one of the most popular CE classes out there. Tara does a great job. This is going to be Thursday, February 17th. This is a CE class from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you would like the registration link for that too, make sure you get it. These classes do tend to fill up, particularly this one. And that's three hours of disclosure. And then real quickly, we've got um, the other ones that we have in our CE series. Landmark Title does these on the third Thursday of the month. So save the date for these. It's a really great way to get your credits in. Lewis wants you to get your credits in. He wants you to keep your license active and get them submitted in to ADRE. So make sure you're staying on top of that. If you need the link for any of these, please reach out to your business development manager, or you can reach out to myself and we'll get you registered so that there is no lapse in your real estate license. And that's it for us today, guys. Thank you once again to the new commissioner. That was amazing having you on such a wealth of knowledge. We really look forward to... Um, to watching your career as it develops. Uh, and of course, thank you to our business development management team, Beth, Becky, Melinda, Mary, Patty, Michael, Lindsay, and Michelle. You all are amazing. Please reach out to them with any of your marketing needs. I know we deviated a little bit from marketing today on Marketing Matters. We had good reason to, but any marketing that you need, please. Keep them in mind. They're happy to help you with everything. And as always, Landmark Title is happy to help you with all of your escrow and title needs. We have seven offices here in the Valley, as well as one up in Prescott. So we can cover you no matter where you are doing your real estate transactions. And that's it for us today, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. And of course, Thank you again, Lewis. Thank you all. Thanks, Sarah. Bye-bye.